Hi, today we're going to talk about some of the advanced left list settings uh, available within Pictoweave. Now, um, if we take a look on the screen, we can see a rather advanced uh, weave that I did some time ago um, of a, a Bengal tiger. Now, this particular weave is six layers, uh, 133 rows down 133 threads and 170 rotations so it's quite a large weave took me a long time to uh, complete it now um, I'll bring up the left list for this particular weave now this left, left list is uh, presented in pretty much the traditional way uh, albeit that I've made some small changes uh, within pick to weave uh, one of which you can see here on the end of each um, uh, rotation there's a what I call a checksum which is an indication of how many threads should be in the left jig for that particular rotation. I've also coloured uh, each number to the thread that should be in the jig on that particular rotation. Um, these, these settings can be turned on or off. Uh, so if we uh, if we work our way through this particular left list, so line one will be the first rotation, which is this leftmost column of the weave over here. So we we'll see we have to place uh, thread 17 and 18 in black in the jig, and on two we're placing 5, 6, 16, 17, and you'll notice a colour change on 18. So 18 was in the line before, but it was black, and now it's a uh, beige colour and uh, adding 19. So you would continue on through your uh, weave checking each line uh, any time that there was a uh, a series of threads that stayed the same you'll see it uh, indicated with a dash between them so 5 and 6 stayed the same 7 was added here 15 was added 16 remained the same 17 changed colour 18 remained the same, 19 changed colour. So these were put in uh, individual, even though we've got from 15 through to 20 as a series, because there's something happening in each of these cases, they're put in individually to give you uh, an indication that you should be checking something there to see what um, needed to be changed. So in each rotation, we're having to check not only the line that we're on, we're having to check the colour of the number, and we're checking against the previous line. Here we can see we've added four. Um, five's changed colour, six remains the same, seven's changed colour, we've added all these others. So uh, we're often people come unstuck where they make mistakes is when a thread gets dropped um, and they miss it so you've constantly got to be scanning along here seeing if uh, if something's not there now that was there on the line before so it can take quite some time to do each individual rotation particularly when you get further down in the weave and you can see all the the action that takes place on any given rotation here on some of these weaves it's taken me up to 45 minutes each rotation just to move all the threads backwards and forwards so um, all that being said it's it's an effective way of uh, carrying out a weave it works very well and has done for many years but uh, one of the things I've found through my uh, manufacturing career is that one of the biggest inhibitors to development is when people say oh that's the way we've always done it so when I started developing pick to weave I contacted the best weavers in the world and asked for their thoughts and I also asked for input from people who knew nothing about weaving at all because sometimes it takes a, um, a set of fresh ideas that you know someone who's unbiased in in what they're looking at to be able to um, to make sure you get the best possible product so one of the ideas that was given to me early on by a, a, a novice weaver was that all this is very good but all I really want to know about is when I should be doing something um, so he asked could I add some sort of indication of when we're adding or removing or changing a thread um, at the time I thought yeah I can do that I don't really see the point you know it's, it's all working the way it's supposed to but um, it wasn't real hard to uh, to do the coding so I thought I'll throw it in so to get to those options we go to options 
uh, left list settings and you can see three settings here highlight layer changes highlight drop threads and highlight added threads now when we select highlight layer changes any time that we uh, have a change in layer it'll add the copyright symbol the C with a circle around it uh, when we select highlight dropped threads any time then that a thread is removed it'll have the registered trademark symbol an R with a circle around it and it'll also put a line through that number and then finally we've got highlight added threads any time then that we add a thread it'll put the at symbol symbol the uh, cursive a symbol uh, just the same as in your email address so with those three things um, activated now I'll once again bring up the left list and you can see that the first line remains much the same it's our starting line but thereafter anytime something happens there's a visual indication a cue so we have here uh, the at symbol on the 5 6 and 16 to indicate that they've been added uh, we've got the copyright symbol or a change symbol here on 18 to indicate that it's a change of color not only because it's a different color displayed but it gives you a visual indication to say hey you need to change this thread uh, and once again an at symbol there so then if we move down into a more complex area you can see we've got all sorts of things going on here but all we really need to focus on are these points if okay we need to change 13 change 14 if I look at the previous line 13 was black and 14 was black in that previous line we remove 46 so 46 was there now it's gone uh, change 53 change 56 change 57 and so on so rather than having to compare this one with that one and what color is this one and was this one here there before um, all we're really interested in is what it's telling us to do um, so the the result of that is that each individual turn particularly on a complex weave like this uh, can be done much much quicker now I would warn that um, as with any uh, semi-automated function if you become too reliant on things uh, you can still make pretty big mistakes so I would still caution you to use the checksum periodically uh, and even to do a manual check every couple of turns uh, just have a good look to make sure that you haven't missed something uh, that you weren't looking at the wrong line or doing something that uh, that you shouldn't have been uh, it's really easy in a complex weave to put something in the wrong place uh, pick it up out of the wrong jig slot and so on so uh, the more checks that you do the less chances that you're going to have to try and back the thing up two or three turns and believe me when you've got a uh, 130 threads in a jig the last thing you want to be doing is backing it up so hopefully you'll find this a, uh, a useful function I certainly have despite my earlier misgivings um, and I look forward to seeing some of your work thank you